that would not have been a surprise in the 60s or the 70s or the 80s. But we were past all that, aren't we? We passed that a long time ago, didn't we? I thought. I've been doing this a long time. I'm tired of doing that. But we're not done yet. Our full equality is not one. And that internal struggle for too many of us is not one. Forty years ago, we were fighting to stay out of jails and mental hospitals, still. Now we take our place in corporate boardrooms. Thirty years ago, we elected our first gay official, lesbian official actually, Land Noble. Today we serve in the halls of Congress. Ten years ago, non-discrimination policies were cutting edge. Five years ago, domestic partner benefits were still cutting edge. Now the debate is about full civil equality and rights to marriage. The movement has changed, the world has changed, and still we're killing ourselves. This battle, this war, our full equality, isn't an issue that will be won at the ballot box, and it's not an issue that's going to be won with legislation. It's an issue about winning hearts and minds. The worst form of discrimination is that we do to <coughs> ourselves. Now I'm going to tell a story on myself and uh, while I have been a public spokesperson for the GLBT community for a very long time, I actually I was a, a student activist, I helped found my university uh, GLBT association back in the 70s. I was arguably the most visible lesbian activist in Houston in the 80s. Interestingly enough, the, the uh, other uh, perhaps second most visible lesbian activist in Houston in uh, the 80s is also is a member of my city council. So we, we came to local government from, from activism. But even for us, it's not always easy to live up to that ideal of being always out there, always strong, and always fighting. And I, I want to uh, lighten the mood a little bit and tell you a, a story on myself. Back in the 80s, I was president of the Houston Gay Political Caucus. It actually changed its name and it became the Houston Gay and Lesbian Political Caucus while I was president. But, uh, <laughs> President of the Houston Gay Political Caucus, and, and every we had an annual Pride celebration in June, and it happened that our Pride cele celebration was on a weekend that coincided with the state uh, Democratic convention, and I was also at that time president of the uh, statewide co-chair of the statewide uh, Democratic organization, and uh, we were and the Gay Political Caucus, so I was president of both organizations, and. Uh, had procrastinated a little bit because I had a full-time job and I had other responsibilities and it was Friday afternoon at 5 o'clock and I needed to get out of town and I had only one task to do for my organization, for the Gay and Lesbian Political Caucus. And that was that we were hosting this big rally after the Pride Parade and we were going to have fireworks because we always have fireworks. Houstonians love fireworks. We had to have fireworks. And my one job for this, the only thing I had volunteered for for that particular event was that I had to be responsible for turning out the lights in the park so the fireworks could be seen. And so I'm running out of town and I go by the park to, to try my light key and see if I can follow the instructions and turn out the lights. And I, it, it's in Spots Park in Houston and it's way down in the bottom of the park. And the park is kind of bowl shaped. There is no terrain in Houston, just in case you know, but this is a flood control area, so it's dug out, and it's parked down at the bottom. And I hiked down to the bottom, and I got there, and my, my key didn't work, I couldn't figure out how to, how to deal with the lights, and I'm just really screwed. I don't have anything else to do, and it's Friday at 5 o'clock. I climbed up to the top of the hill, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's, you now I'm going to explain this to people, and I look over, and there is a, a City of Houston electrical truck sitting 
um, on the, in the parking lot there. And it's this truck that has t tires about as tall as I am. And I uh, thought, ah, electrical truck, perhaps. So I went and I knocked on the, the door of the truck. I could see somebody's head in there. And the guy climbs down, and he gets down, and he's about this tall. <laughs> and uh, he's an elderly gentleman, and I put on my best Southern Bell attitude and asked him if he could please, please help me figure out how to do the lights. Poor little me couldn't, couldn't do the lights, man. I really needed his help. And, and uh, there was no one else I could call because it was, of course, 5 o'clock on Friday. And he agreed to go and help me, and help me do this. And so we, we start walking down the hill toward the light box. And uh, I want to give you an idea how it was going. Uh, he had a limp, and so he's walking very slowly because the hill is steep down into the bowl. And he wants to talk. He's very chatty. And all I wanted to do was get the heck out of there. And uh, he also had a cigar that he was chewing on. He wasn't smoking it, but he was just kind of gnawing on this little stub. And uh, you know, he'd take it out periodically as he hopped down the hill. And he said, starts talking, and he goes, you know, they use this part for a lot of different things. And I said, really? <laughs> They just let anybody use this park. Hmm. Last week they had a bunch of witches in here and they were chanting and burning incense. What? Witches, you know. Oh, there were a bunch of Wiccans here last week. Yeah, I saw that. I thought that was pretty interesting. They were here celebrating solstice. Yeah, you just can't keep anybody out these days. Hmm. Oh. You're not a what, are you? No, sir. No. And he said, well, what kind of event are you having? And I said, we're having a celebration. Kind of a celebration. And well, maybe it's not a celebration. It's more of a political rally. Well, which party? Neither party. We're a bipartisan organization. <laughs> takes a few more steps and he's taking his, chewing on his cigar and says, well, what's the name of your group? And I mumbled something. He goes, what? And he stopped walking and he stared at me and uh, I looked at him and I finally said, uh, it's the gay and, actually not lesbian at that point, it's the gay political caucus. And he looks at me kind of quizzically and he takes a few more steps and he looks back at me and well, why are you here? <laughs> I said, because I had the key. <laughs> and he takes a few more steps and he looks at me and, he, and again and he, and he really looks puzzled and he says, well, you're not gay, are you? And I said, well, yes, sir, I am. And he took two more steps and he stopped and he looked at me and he got a real hard look on his face and he said, you know, I don't approve of that sort of thing. I don't have to do this. I just wouldn't feel right about doing this. I am not going to help you. I'm just going to go get back in my truck. And in, you know, I'm off the clock now. I'm just going to go get back in my truck and, and go back to the shop. And I stood in front of him and I said, you know, Sir, I, I have no one else to turn to. Obviously, if you don't help me, no one else will. It's the end of the day. I need, uh, I need to do this. There are a lot of people dependent on me. And uh, I'm trying to get out of town as well. I'm due at the State Democratic Convention tonight. And he goes, you're a Democrat! <laughs> and I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I am a Democrat. And uh, he looked at me again, and he just stared at me for a very long time. And he started shaking his head and muttering to himself. And finally, he smiled, and he goes, well, you know what? I'm a uh, lifelong union man and Democrat myself. Come on, honey, let's go turn your lights on. <laughs>